I am Chihira Kanai, a Toshiba communication android, proclaimed a humanoid standing on stage as part of a presentation on the future of travel at the ITB Travel Fair in Berlin. Wearing a blue uniform and a white collared shirt framing her silicone neck and face, Kanai blinked as she spoke to an audience of flashing cameras. But who is Chihira Kanai? We find out today. An epic entry. Robots are making an entry into the hospitality industry that has, until now, always prided itself on delivering a warm, personable touch. At the entrance to Berlin's Exhibition Hall, where thousands of travel industry professionals were gathering for the ITB trade show, humanoid robot Shahira Kane greeted visitors in English, German, Chinese, and Japanese. Dressed in a blue jacket with a neck scarf, Shahira Kane was on her first visit to Europe where she was seeking potential employment for herself and her kind. Three months prior, her sister began working as a meet and greeter in a Tokyo shopping center. Their creator, Toshiba, also foresees a great future ahead for them in tourism. Who is Chihira Kane? I am the sister of Yunko and Aiko, said Kane in a robot voice. I would like to work in the travel industry and to help travel companies in the future. Toshiba showed off the latest generation of its Chihira robot at a trade fair in Berlin. The machine, which is designed to look as human-like as possible, has had the German language added to its repertoire. The firm also told media that it upgraded the machine's control system to make its movement smoother. However, one expert suggested the realistic appearance might not be best suited to Western audiences. Professor Noel Sharkey, a roboticist at the University of Sheffield, said he thought the machine still fell clearly on this side of the uncanny valley. The term refers to the fact that many people feel increasingly uncomfortable the closer a robot gets to appearing like a human being, so long as the two remain distinguishable. Passing Travel Tips Toshiba brought the Chihira Kane droid to the ITB Travel Expo to highlight what it hopes could become a viable product for the tourism industry. The machine had been installed at an information desk where it responds to attendees' verbal questions about the conference. It marked the first appearance of the robot outside Japan, where it was unveiled a month earlier. The earlier models in the series are Chihira Aiko, which made its debut at Japan's SeaTac Tech Show in 2014, Chihira Junko, which was launched in October and is currently in use at a Tokyo shopping center's information desk. The changes. We have improved the software and the hardware to improve the air pressure system, explained Hitoshi Tokuda, chief specialist at Toshiba's research and development center. If the air pressure is unstable, her movements become affected by vibrations, so if the airflow is very precisely controlled, her movements are smoother. Like its predecessors, Chihira Kane can also interpret and respond to requests in English, Japanese, and Chinese, as well as using sign language. It can be combined with any kind of language processing system, so we can make her speak many other languages as well," added Mr. Tokuda. We have created Chihira Kane to have a human-like appearance as people, particularly the older generation, find this look more welcoming and approachable. This is particularly important, as in addition to her work in the tourism and service industries, Chihira Kane will be used in the health sector to care for older people. We have also found that people prefer speaking to a human-like communication android as they can ask their questions as many times as they need, without feeling embarrassed or awkward. Not convinced. However, some are not convinced by Toshiba's approach. As a robot, it is very good, but it still has that slight look of a psycho slayer. Professor Sharkey commented. He added that there was a growing cultural split in opinions about what androids should look like. In surveys between Japan and the US, it seems that the Japanese really want robots that are indistinguishable from humans, while in the US and the West in general, people would rather know it's a robot that they are dealing with. Personally, I would always prefer to know that I am dealing with a robot rather than being deceived by a machine. It is a matter of trust. The cost? A Lamborghini. Kane, who hails from Japan, can be programmed to speak any language, including sign language. She has two sisters, Chihira Aiko, who assists shoppers at a Tokyo shopping center, and Chihira Junko, who offers help at an info desk at Tokyo's Aqua City Odaiba shopping mall. These three sister robots are like a growing family of robotic Kardashian sisters, and they might come to a vacation near you. Everyone photographs them, their faces are made of plastic, and they're not cheap. Chihira Kane costs about the same price as a Lamborghini, said Hitoshi Tokuda. Bots in Tourism Bots in Tourism signal an industry shift. Hilton Hotels, for example, announced in the past that it was teaming up with IBM for a concierge robot named Neo. 
while the SkyMax Skytender started mixing martinis on airplanes back in 2012. But aside from the novelty, which some experts say is still a bit too uncanny to fit into normal day-to-day, -day, what will travel look like in 2024? Imagine underwater hotels, 3D printed buildings on the moon, and multilingual brain transplants. There are already VR travel tours with Oculus Rift, virtual travel agents like Hipmunk, and virtual cloud passports are being researched in Australia, which means Australians could travel without having to show physical passports, as passport data would be stored on government servers that border agencies can access by matching data with fingerprints or digital images. But soon, the Chihira sisters will be more common in shopping malls, train stations and airports, according to Philip Filipov, business-to-business -business director at Skyscanner, a travel search engine which finds flights, cars and hotels. Thanks to tech, travelers have no need to encounter a single human being from the time they enter a hotel to the time they check out of their room, said Filipov who worked on Skyscanner's 2024 Future of Travel report. Marriott has already gone overboard with apps. Guests can check in, get their room key, and make dinner reservations all on their mobile device, as well as log into Netflix and order room service. Much of what the hotel reception was once needed for can now be handled by your mobile phone, said Filipov. VR will also play a huge role in the future of travel, which Filipov says won't replace travel completely, but will be a tool for inspiration that will allow travelers to check out destinations without leaving their house, he said. And taking that long flight to Australia will be shortened thanks to speed travel. Filipov said Virgin Galactic, despite its spacecraft crash, will be a strong leader in getting travelers quickly around the globe. Imagine being able to enjoy a quick weekend trip from New York to Sydney where you can spend two full days in Sydney versus two days flying to Sydney, he said. A little space age. It gets a little space age too. Hotel rooms will have mirrors that double as motion gesture touchscreens like Cyber Textures Cyber Mirror that stores data on mirrors which can be accessed as hotel guests brush their teeth to see daily weather, a calendar and stocks, as well as our social media apps, email and fitness tracking. And cyborg chips and mini cameras will track everything from children to Uber drivers. What this means for travel is that tracking, along with wearables, allows the technology to become a transmitter for travelers to share their vacation experience from their point of view," said Filipov. As for robots like the Kenei sisters, it will still take time before they hit the mainstream. AI is the next phase where we learn to make recommendations based on customers' needs and preferences, said Filipov. The current exponential growth of chat robots and voice search skills is the first step in making this a reality, more like the Chihira sisters. Mario, another humanoid, has already found a job at the Ghent Marriott Hotel in Belgium, where he has welcomed visitors for a while. He is also multilingual, speaking 19 languages to be precise. On top of that, he helps serve hotel buffets and entertains guests by singing and dancing. Unlike Jahira Kane, Mario doesn't pretend to look like a human. Standing just 50 centimeters or 1.6 feet tall, Mario is white with red stripes, has speakers for ears and six fingers but his employer is pleased with his work. He puts a smile on everybody's face, says Roger Langhout, director general of the hotel, adding, it's a good way to get people to remember our hotel. We are still exploring the possibilities of Mario, he said, even if he acknowledges that humans can never be fully replaced by machines in the hotel business. However, a recent survey of 6,000 travelers by U.S. online bookings company TravelZoo found that two in three people are comfortable with seeing robots in the tourism industry. The Chinese are among the most enthusiastic, while the French and Germans are more reticent. That's all for this video, folks. We will see you another time.